Welcome to this tutorial covering the introduction to the Learner or LearnIOR GUI interface. As you can see, this is the startup screen, and as you can see at the top of the interface, we have various tabs for a range of functions. Learn is the primary interface for learning infrared signals. It can configure various utilities included with the system. Uh, a library interface, logs for troubleshooting, debug interface and a programmer for uploading new firmware to the device. <coughs> so let's start at the initial screen. Um, what we'll look at first is down below, we, we see here connect is red and uh, obviously we're not connected to the device when this is read so we go over to the port and we have one available on com58 here and we also need to correct connect or select the correct uh, baud rate for the device the default is always uh, 115 200 bits per second um, and there are others available in general the only other uh, baud rate that's required is uh, 19 to um, when sometimes for some configurations in embedded mode for most situations the, this the default is fine so let's now go and select <coughs> the uh, port correct port and as you can see uh, the connect button now ha ha the red has gone from here so we're connected to the device <coughs> so let's start off uh, simply first by just recording a few signals so I'm pressing my remote control here and it's a Sony and it's been detected as Sony um, we have <coughs> an, quite a number of popular signals pre-programmed into the application to automatically detect the protocol uh, more can be added uh, by users as we'll see later um, now let's first of all look at the uh, signals uh, the correct you know um, and I'll press different volumes here so quick press there now we get three uh, in general with Sony you get three bursts uh, of a signal and if you keep it pressed for longer you'll get more um, the, the one of the unique features of our system here is an auto clean function so I click that here and now when I press the signals we will get corrected timings to exactly match the protocol the reason for this is is that when you're recording io signals no matter what io receiver you have there will always be a certain error uh, the default in analyzer is pretty good uh, even without the auto clean function but every learner you you come across will have uh, a certain error this feature automatically corrects uh, the signal timings to give you a perfect signal every time on the top here we have our own um, we have our own um, infrared encoding format which we call LIR for learn IOR and as you can see here uh, in hex here this is the frequency which is 40 degrees which is also recorded over here automatically by learner and then we have all the various encoding for the signal here um, <coughs> We also demonstrate here is here is the signal in what's called pronto uh, format um, so you get this automatically generated for every signal recorded um, various things. okay so let me just try uh, another remote control here and see what we get and this is a Philips remote which is RC6 and as you can see the times are all uh, consistent here automatically corrected which makes for uh, you know great performance when you're trying to resend these signals and over here as with all RC6 signals uh, the carrier frequency is uh, 36 now we can go back and re you know look at these signals again as we wish there's no problem uh, over on the right here <coughs> we have an interface for um, which works with the, uh, um, the the automatic learning sequence here so for example if I go in here and I just select default well we select the default and then I go over to automatic key set learning this is a nice feature to uh, help you 
when you're trying to do bulk recording of all the signals on the remote control rather than just looking for one. So let's start off and I click here and it pops the thing. Now what it's doing here is, is this this is, uh, has loaded um, a script essentially. A uh, very simple script which just lists off all of the buttons on the remote and if you're doing this continuously this can be very helpful. So what I'll do is I'll press the thing and it got a good signal so now it's asking you to press button 1. So now I'm pressing button 1. So now button 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and you heard the beep there so now what, what I had just done is I had taken the mute button off so if you want to get a, um, an audio an audio uh, confirmation of the signal as it's received we'll try it again so I go for 9 sorry I didn't press that um, so now the 3D the, this is for a 3D TV it's set up so let me just press the signal for that Okay, and there we go. And we have various other buttons on the remote that we won't we won't go. Now at any time you can go back and forward and, and record the, the system. So we have all these signals over here. Now there are various things you can do with this. One would be to um, add to library or you can automatically add the signals as you're recording them to the library over here. If you want to send the signal again, you just press this button here to test the signal at any point. Um, another feature is, and we, we, we've already mentioned this elsewhere, is that Learner and this application is tightly integrated with Analyzer in, in several ways. One, it can just be a source plugged directly into the Analyzer device and it works perfectly fine for analyzing and decoding signals. And here <coughs> we can choose to copy all of the signals here over to analyzer in one go um, we, can all the, we can copy the existing signal into channel one or channel two of analyzer or we can copy all of them um, okay if when you're if you just want to record one button and you want to also record the make model remote note you, you should fill in these fields before recording the signals obviously and they will be recorded in the library uh, with the signal. Um, I think we have um, most things here that we want to cover in this. Okay so now let's move on to the configure tab. <coughs> now as you just may have noticed there um, the, the application retrieved all of the configuration from the connected device on COM58 which is a learner module and loaded it in here for display and in you have full flexibility uh, to configure the device based on these patterns this th here we just report this is hardwired into the system the version number and the release of the firmware on the device um, the product ID at the moment we just have learner and uh, in future we hope to add more devices that will use the same interface which is hence why it's, it's, it's available again you can set the, the baud rate on the device but we strongly recommend leaving it at 115 200 or in certain circumstances when you're running in in um, embedded mode it may be appropriate to change it to 192 um, here we, you can adjust the calibration for marks and spaces being recorded. However, uh, the performance of Learner by default is so good it's generally not required. But you know, in some situations, you may find that a, a particular uh, protocol or uh, situation requires that, and so you have the flexibility to actually calibrate the device. Uh, we introduced that early on in design but we found it's not really necessary going forward. Uh, here you can set the duty cycle of transmitted IR signals from Learner um, from 50 down to 10 which is a reasonable range. There's no great need for anything more. Generally shouldn't be more than 50. 33 is a good value which is what we default to. Here are some uh, other settings to 
turn the onboard display on learner on or off um, learner sends uh, a heartbeat back to the win you know over the serial interface every minute or so just to let everyone know it's still working away good you can turn that off um, in, in general for um, you know in some situations like embedded mode you may not want that or you may uh, as the case may be um, verbose mode again is generally advisable when working in in embedded mode uh, we, we provide an API for that and uh, generally having less traffic going over the interface because you know it, essentially the verbose mode turns off a lot of textual debugging type information so there's no real need to have that in an embedded system of your own it just adds to the programming overhead for your own application uh, here we see a report that the checksum on the check the eprom checksum um, which uh, has been reported uh, is good so which is if, if there's a problem with the checksum this will be in red i'm saying bad um, learner runs on an av or an atmel av or device and here we have the fuse settings being reported um, and they're also recorded in the EEPROM uh, for reference. Um, in general, this will be a different value, uh, but because this is a test device, uh, our lockputs are, 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 are slightly different for, for um, debugging purposes. But normally, this should be green when, when you're using your device. <coughs> Again, every AVR microcontroller has a signature, and this is recorded here as well, and you can see over here. Now, we can just, if we want to retrieve at any stage, if you want to retrieve the settings from the device, just press this button, and we saw there that they, they were uploaded. Um, you can copy the settings into your um, into your clipboard. Um, you can set the default settings by clicking that device, which will just set the settings here, and then at any stage, you can write the, your settings to the device and that overrides whatever settings are on the device. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. Over here on the auto clean uh, section, if there is a particular protocol that does is not uh, pre-programmed into the system, uh, you can add your own here. So if you come across some obscure device and you want to clean the signals automatically as you're recording them, you can just go into this directory here and uh, it's a pretty simple interface. All you do is, um, as I say, uh, we just loaded that back in, um, and or you can create a new one or delete them, etc., etc. And so that's bad enough for configuration utilities. Um, because we still have a lot of resources uh, left on the the device in terms of flash. Um, we decided to help with the testing of the device to just for fun i guess add in a lot of um, uh, utilities like this to help us uh, enhance the device so uh, what we have here is <coughs> we you can configure uh, learner as a effectively as an ior jammer um, and we allow for selection of the frequency the duration of the jamming and then you press here to start the we have several modes which are uh, quite fun really so in stealth mode we wait until a signal is detected in the environment and then we start jamming the signal um, in flood mode the signal is just uh, transmitted consistently and in pulse mode it, uh, an interference pattern is added to the signal uh, which can uh, uh, be more effective for some IO receivers so uh, this is a fun a fun utility but uh, please don't misuse it obviously um, the next one is serial IO if you want to send you can send in text or, or in hex um, serial data over IO and by just testing pushing here and testing there it's quite, quite interesting um, that is related to another one over here which we'll come to later uh, next we have a signal generator <coughs> which can go um, for uh, 
let's see, let's set it there. We're at one kilohertz, and that's great. The signal generated is one kilohertz. Not every frequency is available um, because of the limitations of the microcontroller, but uh, here are the settings that we generated to create the square wave. Uh, there's only square wave supported, but we can have a duty cycle. We recommend not having uh, not 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 having. Um, more than 50% duty cycle, particularly if you're running the system over extended periods. Um, you can also go to, if you say, that's one megahertz, and we get one megahertz. If I go to eight megahertz, we get eight megahertz, but if I go to 10 megahertz, oh, sorry it's over the it's over the the valid range but let me go to um 333 40333 and you'll see that the actual frequency that's achievable using the various uh, peripherals on the microcontroller is this so here's the desired frequency down here is the actual frequency generator so it may be useful for some people uh, over here we have um, a facility uh, mainly useful with um, yeah, cameras I would think but there are other um, possibilities for this where you can set up a whole um, essentially formula or algorithm for uh, generating a time-lapse type uh, event where the signal is sent and this can be quite complex I won't go into all the details of it here uh, it is covered in the um, in the user guide over here we have some uh, pre-programmed uh, camera signal so if you have a camera signal with an infrared control uh, we have preloaded all of these uh, devices and their signals into the system so if i go and do that that it automatically puts in and we can send the signal from here or we can add it over to the time lapse and it comes over here Okay, so we can add again multiple sequences over to the time lapse system so we can create quite complex uh, routines to generate a, uh, a time lapse. You may be controlling a camera or a camera and other devices, so uh, uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, we will be interested to see what people uh, come up with that. And then finally, a lot of people will be familiar with uh, the Disney, Disney Glow to Show Ears. Um, and we have um, have become uh, quite popular at many of the entertainment parks um, and what we have done is we have created a whole load of signals here that will work with the uh, with, with the ears and you can control um, test and control all of the signals uh, down for example um, so if you go green right that's a very simple signal um, there may be other ones that are a little bit more complex and you can enter in uh, delays etc etc uh, between sending the signals then once you're happy with what you've got you can probably then move it over to your own microcontroller uh, now the connection here is, is that this is essentially a, a 2400 uh, baud uh, serial um, protocol which matches exactly with what is here this this operates a 2400 board over io over io um, the other difficult thing with the um, with the signals is is that the last byte is generally the uh, the crc information and we can verify the c or c or if we do which is just uh, gibberish I'm just entering and you can see it changed hopefully you see that it, it actually corrected the last byte corrected the C or C for the last byte on the signal that can avoid a lot of heartache when you're trying to uh, generate your own signals okay so now moving on to the library um, as we mentioned in the learning phase you can copy signals manually or automatically over to the library and build up your own library of signals essentially so maybe more useful for professionals who, who are going in and out all the time uh, and into different situations um, but you know it has its uses for everybody so let me go uh, here can just show an example here we uh, did a Grundig 
uh, TV <laughs> which we came across in a hotel we were staying in and there you go so all of the data and metadata is stored here for the library so this can be quite useful you can save the library somewhere else or you can preview some of the signals so if I go here it'll bring me back in and there's the signal here which is visible um, so yeah, it can be quite useful again you can take these and move them over to analyzer if you really want to get into analyzing a particular signal so they work quite well together next we have a log so everything you do with the system is logged in your file system and you get the traffic so this is mainly this will mainly be useful for uh, support activities by ourselves and also for people who are um, trying to uh, create you know work in, in embedded mode so they can see exactly what's happening over the serial interface um, the various commands so if, if they come across a problem they can easily um, uh, correct it and find out what's happening on the interface <coughs> uh, in the debug mode this is a feature that may be removed in future because we, we just developed this for our own development purposes but again a lot of the commands that are available uh, in the system um, so uh, you 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 get here so here's an echo and you can see down here that an echo command was sent and an echo response was received. So you get to see all of that type of stuff. Um, over here we have a programmer and this is the last uh, section in the tutorial. Um, so at, before we do anything, nothing is known. Um, and all you have to do is, <coughs> there, you, you don't have to do any steps. If you want to upgrade or load for, reload the firmware onto the device, all you have to do is uh, just press it now you click load firmware and as you can see over here the system is automatically loading uh, the firmware and there will be some requirements to uh, load some other applications into the system to help with this but essentially um, uh, this is th this is this is fine so you can see down here it took takes you know 12, 13, 14, 15 seconds and you get a confirmation that the, the firmware has been uploaded and verified as well which is very important okay so we go back if I go back here and there's one more thing I want to show you um, is that previously we had one flash ride to this particular device and if I go and retrieve so if you look here it says one if I go and retrieve it says two so now that's because we uploaded the firmware so every time the firmware is uploaded we get a count here and you can see that down here that's where the checksum is is stored and this is the number of flash writes which is not part of the checksum for obvious reasons um, okay so that about concludes our uh, tutorial for now and um, Hopefully, if you um, I think this is useful, it is quite a sophisticated device and one of the most, if not the most, advanced uh, infrared learners available. Um, it's not a consumer device, but uh, for makers and professionals, it is uh, quite powerful. Um, and bear in mind that you also get a, a quite a substantial um, user guide with the system, plus we also have available uh, an APA, an API and an example application which shows you how to develop your own full featured learning infrared remote control using either the analyzer, sorry, the learner, learner module or the learner system on ship uh, IC which can be embedded into your own application and all you have to add is your own uh, maybe EEPROM or something like that to store the signals. Uh, the example application is an Arduino sketch which uh, goes through all of the required functions to develop your own system. Um, so thank you for listening and check our website um, if you want to uh, get your own uh, learner device. Uh, we, we, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Bye bye.